Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Indie Showcase, your go-to podcast for underrated, unseen indie video games. So, I heard you like burning stuff, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Good, because this week we're talking about the hottest little indie game since ever, Little Inferno. Wait, is that not what hottest means? When the game starts, you get nothing but a little fireplace in front of you, with a sign propped up inside telling you that you can click as well as drag the mouse around to create fire. Once you start doing that, letters start popping into a bar at the bottom, which acts as your inventory. And when you start reading the first batch, they're written in the style of your great aunt, uh, almost creepy of how endearing they are. According to the signatures at the end of every letter, they are written by a Miss Nancy who is the representative of the Tomorrow Corporation, the studio that made this game in real life, uh, but in the world of the game, the creators of the fireplace that you're staring at. She thanks you for purchasing the fireplace and are given a catalog of items to go with it. Anything from building blocks to batteries to someone else's credit card and cob on the corn. Corn on the cob, I clearly meant corn on the cob. When you purchase the item from the catalog, you start getting a... Wait. What, what was the question? Where do you get the money from? Why, from burning stuff, of course. That makes no sense. Well, I'm not the one who designed the game. Occasionally, there'll be spiders running around in the fireplace. If you burn them up, you'll get money from them. Somehow. Which also allows you to purchase items from the catalog. When you burn stuff from the catalog, you'll earn even more money than you originally spent so an NPC from the game claims. Once you've burned everything from the first catalog, you'll unlock the second catalog, and Miss Nancy will send you congratulations, as well as an instructional video for the fireplace in the style of a 90s commercial, with the jingle and everything. It's Little Inferno, it's Little Inferno just for me. Although it's... Also, one of the very few things in the game that gives the basics on the lore of the world around you. Long story short, humanity, for one reason or another, is experiencing an ice age. So, in order to survive, they've all bundled up in each of their homes and purchased fireplaces with the sole purpose of burning items to keep warm. And the Tomorrow Corporation turned it into a game for kids! Yay! If you want, you can easily find the commercial on YouTube, and it gives an exceptionally good depiction of the style that the game developers were going for. It's still among the creepiest kid-friendly things I've ever watched. With the basics out of the way, let's talk about a few other characters other than Miss Nancy that you'll be communicating with, in quotation marks. Sugar Plums introduces herself super early on as your next door neighbor, and has a very hyper personality for a girl her age. Based on the picture she gives you, I'd guess around 8 or 9? There's also the weatherman who occasionally gives you updates on the conditions outside. It's never pretty, though he tries to sugarcoat it as much as possible. For the entire game, your only form of communication is with letters, and past that, you're isolated from the outside world and are stuck inside, next to the fireplace, burning anything and everything you can buy. Surprisingly, the game has this weird mix of a creepy nature, with themes of surveillance popping up, as well as the common phrase, this won't last forever. Well, they're also throwing in some humorous and clever items in the catalogs, as well as interesting way that said items burn. Even the ones that aren't clever or humorous sometimes burn in clever ways. I think one of my favorites would have to be the mini moon, which actually draws items towards it as if it had enough mass for its gravity to affect other objects. This game was experimental for the time, but I personally really enjoyed it. And I'd recommend it to anyone who's interested by what I've said thus far. Just don't expect a traditional gaming experience. No bonus points for the game this week, I'm afraid though. What you buy is what you get, besides performance and security updates, of course. Join us again next week where we'll be covering another underappreciated indie game of the past or present. See ya!